All right, before we get into the video, I just wanna show you guys this pretty angry lady. So she's doing better-ish, um, holding her, and she still hisses, she still strikes, she still wants to bite me. But if I can catch her off guard like I just did and grab her really fast without her figuring out what's going on, um, she is kind of handleable. And I can handle her for a couple of minutes and then she starts to get a little grouchy. But uh, as you can see, this girl is temperament's getting a lot better, a lot nicer. When I have her out and kind of up a little bit, then uh, she definitely calms down. It's beautiful colors on her, awesome marking. So it's a VPI Aztec, and really excited to watch her grow up. Hopefully, I can get her nicer because nobody wants a bigger, angry snake. But look at the markings on her. Really, really pretty snake. And I guess that is all the time of bonding that she wants and then if I close it or if I try to grab her out again she knows what's going on so she will strike and she will hiss and uh, <laughs> that is what's going on with us right now. Welcome back everybody. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome day and had a great week. So I've been extremely busy with personal stuff, work, uh, setting up some of the snakes for the winter time. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit, but I really wanted to show you guys pop tarts she shit out. Very excited about that. She's definitely growing nicely. Get some better lighting on her. And I think in 2022, I'm going to uh, push her food up just a little bit, so I'm not going to feed her more per month. I think I'm just going to give her bigger meals because she is over five feet. She is going to be three years old here in the next couple of months. And I do believe her growth spurt has started or will start here very shortly. So she definitely needs to get thicker and put some weight on her for the upcoming years uh, because I don't want to, you know, have a semi-older anaconda that looks unhealthy, I should say. So I think she would do well on medium rats. I'm sure she could take larges, but I think I'm gonna still keep her on a two to three week feeding schedule and see how that goes and then maybe adjust it a little bit. So she shut out. She's phenomenal, great attitude, um, great personality. I've been working with her since I first got her at a couple months old and been interacting with her daily and weekly. And I don't have any issues with her. So a lot of people say that they're mean and they're nasty. Um, yeah, I mean, any snake can be mean and nasty if you don't give them attention or if you don't hold them or, or show that you're not a threat. I mean, I have an, the VPI Aztec that wants to bite me all the time. So um, I'll set her down. I want to show you guys the ghost before we talk about what's going on in this video. So um, I'm not sure if pop are really going to let me put her down. So this is the ghost. Um, I do love the ghosts. She just shed out. Um, the super ghosts look phenomenal. Um, I think one of my favorite ghosts is the IMG ghost, but I'd like anything that's IMG. They are a hefty penny, so I don't think that's really going to be happening anytime soon. But the colors, the patterns, the black speckling on them is totally random. Some have a lot more, some have a lot less. I just think it gives them a little bit of a unique look. And I like the tail too, the browns with the black circles. And then the lighting's not the greatest, but the browns and the whites on the sides, they just look phenomenal in my opinion. So let's talk about, not her. Let's talk about heating, reptile rooms. Um, it is, it is winter-ish. Um, it's going to be winter here. Well, way worse, surely, for those of us that live in colder climates. So I'm in Ohio. Uh, in the daytimes, it's about 40 to 50, so it's not that bad. In the wintertime, or sorry, in the nighttime, it's dropping down to uh, the 20s and the 30s. So that kind of sucks. Um, and then it does get single digits into the negatives, you know, in December, January, and February. So those are really what I'm worried about. So I do keep the house temperature around... 65 to 67 that's just where i personally feel comfortable with that so the snake room has to be 85 or 
a little bit more, maybe 90, depending on what you guys like. So it's difficult to keep a separate bedroom 20 to 30 degrees hotter than the rest of the um, than the rest of the house. So compared to last year to this year, we're in a bigger bedroom now. So we're in the main bedroom. It wasn't just a, in a spare bedroom and it was a lot smaller. So it was a lot easier to heat with just one space heater. I didn't have any issues with that. Um, now, being in a bigger room, I'm having a little bit more difficult. So right now I'm running two space heaters, not really on full blast, but kind of half and half. So one's not, you know, struggling to keep up. And I'm finding that the room stays around 85 to sometimes it, it pushes to 88, 89 in the daytime when the sun comes out, uh, which isn't, I don't think is that terrible. I do, I do need to make sure it doesn't go above 95, 90, 95 in stagnant air. So I do have a, a fan to blow some of that air around to help out. Um, I am running the two regular oil heaters. So I don't run the basic space heaters with the light up coils. I think oil heaters are a lot safer. Um, I haven't heard that many horror stories about fires or explosions or anything like that with, with oil heaters. I'm sure it happens. I don't run, um, I don't run external um, thermostats on the oil heaters. I know some people say you have to, they have built in ones. Anytime you mess around with electricity or a heating element, you can always have the risk of running a fire no matter how safe you can be. I've, I've seen pictures of people's houses burned to the ground um, running external thermostats. I mean, these pump out so much more energy than the regular heat panels or heat tape or anything like that. So you have to buy a specific one for the wattage. I'm not an electrician, so I really don't know all that stuff. But I've seen people's houses burn down on heat tape, heat pads, heat mats, heat everything that has to do with heat. I've seen horror stories. It, it, it definitely sucks and it definitely scares me. Um, being in a colder climate, running this stuff. Um, I would love to have my own barn or facility in the backyard at some point where it has its own central heat and its own central air, which is a lot safer. But I got to do what I got to do right now because I'm broke <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't have a hundred thousand dollars just to throw out on, uh, at, a, at, a, at an extra building for my snakes. But you guys do what you guys feel safe with. I do buy new oil heaters every two to three years. Just makes me sleep better at night. I do run the space heaters 24 seven through the summertime, 24 seven through the wintertime. So they do get used often. Um, and there's buying brand new units every two years ish. Um, it, it makes me feel better that they're not going to fail. <laughs> That's just what I'm doing. So a couple days ago, I did buy a 120 watt um, heat panel and then I got a new thermostat. So let's check that out. It was a pain in the butt to install it because I'm old and I'm fat and I was all up in pop tarts cage upside down trying to put this 120 watt thing. And they gave me these screws that were self tapping screws but they wouldn't bite and they wouldn't hold in the PVC. Um, I haven't had that issue on the 80 watts, so I don't know if they gave me screws that didn't hold the weight of the 120. I don't know. Uh, so I put it in, it would hold for a couple seconds and then it would fall. And then I just went to the hardware store and then I just got regular screws and it's holding just fine. So I'll show you guys that in a little bit. Um, I don't have to worry about the, the ARS heating rack because pretty sure you can have the ambient heat at whatever you want in your house. It does have the heat panels in the back where you can put them wherever you want to. So that does give off enough heat for the snakes. So I don't have to worry about anything in here. My main concern is the snakes back there, which I do have this oil heater right there. Um, I am frequently checking to make sure that the heat is not blasting on them because we don't want them to get burned up. Uh, my main thing is these guys over here, which we'll talk about. And then anything really above this level right here on Pop-Tarts Cage, it's like 85. I can keep it 85 and up on, on all of these right here. But it's the floor that is horrible because concrete gets cold. Even though it has carpet, it's not that great a carpet. Concrete gets cold in the wintertime, and then obviously the cold air is going to soak through onto here. So we don't want a little Pop-Tart. Turn into a little popsicle. 
Um, so that, that that's where I'm at right now, and we'll show you guys what's going on. So bear with me on the annoying noise on the glass. So I've been running an 80 watt over to here, which has been perfectly fine. I've had temperatures on the floor, and this is two feet high on an 80 watt at up to 90 degrees. So the 80 watt definitely pumps out some significant heat. And as we can see, it's dark, but I got the 120 watt mounted. The instructions do say to put the probe three to six inches underneath the panel, and that's what I've been doing. I've had no issues at all. I do have some issues though when I leave the doors open for a significant amount of time. The hot air comes out or it changes the temperature, even two degrees, I'll get a warning light on these, uh, on these uh, thermostat boxes. Like, it, like it'll beep at me until I come in here and push a button and then recognize what's going on. So the 120 right now I've got at 90. So I had a little gauge in there and it was at, at it was in at like 87, which is perfect. So I think I'm going to lower this one down. So this could be a cooler area so she can hang out in. I don't know what she wants to do. So we'll put her back. But I have noticed that she does hang out a lot in her cold side. So down here, it can drop into the 70s. I don't want her to get respiratory infection. That's just one of my fears. And I hate when, I hate when she goes, there she goes straight around the corner. Like she knows that I don't like her to go back there because there's this little area, and I, I talk about this all the time, between the wall and the cage. She can squeeze back through there and she hangs out back there and it's so difficult to get her out. Um, but we'll let her hang out for a little bit. Um, so help me out on how you guys are insulating your rooms. Or maybe you guys don't have any issues. <laughs> maybe I'm the only one that's struggling. I know there's guys that have been doing this for years and have everything down pat. Been thinking about maybe going to Lowe's or Home Depot and getting the huge eight foot by four foot, the, uh, the pink. Um, panels for insulation and just might put some of those up against the walls definitely maybe cover the window a little bit um, and then maybe that'll help the room out at nighttime but let me know what you guys do uh, when you guys or how you and I'm not talking about you guys that have full-blown facilities because I know you guys have central air in there um, but do you guys run oil heaters space heaters I mean most of you guys I would assume run some sort of a rack system with the heat already installed. Um, like I said, it, the only thing that I'm really concerned about is the, f the ground level animals, which is the anaconda. So I do have the 280s. I do have another 80 watt from the last um, build that I had. So I did have two of these, one for the berm, which is in here now, which is doing a lot better. And that's a different story for later. She's doing much better in a smaller container because she is still tiny. Um, so I have another 80 watt heat panel, which I'm thinking about doing is raising the bottom or the second level up a little bit, putting wood under there just to make a little space, put an 80 watt on the bottom. And then the, cause the screws, these are super thin PVC. So if I run any type of a screw through there, it's going to puncture the second level and then scratch the snakes. And Pop-Tart just went in the back. So that'll be like a 45 minute challenge to get her out. Um, Cause I do want to keep everything on the lower levels. And since it's closer to the window, I don't know, I just want to be prepared. Even though it is in the eighties down there, I just want to be super prepared and put an 80 watt. So I can run the 7030 and an 80 watt on, the, on this, since it's a two channel. And I can run the 80 and the 120 on that since it's a two channel. Now I have heard people run two channels on the 7030s. They split it down the center and then they have two different degrees on the top and the bottom. But so far, I'm not having any issues on the bottom with the top. I mean, the top does get a little bit warmer and I don't know why because I have my probe at the very bottom. I don't know how that works. But I can touch the back of the tubs and they're all warm, which is most important part. So that's what I'm doing in the room, trying to keep all the animals alive, healthy, 
and warm for the winter time because winter sucks. Everybody knows that. I'm super jealous of everybody that lives in Florida right now. And you guys don't have to deal with this. So help me out. Give me some suggestions on the best way to warm some of these animals up. Ambient style. I, see. I mean, I guess I could put every single animal on a heat panel, which would work. Um, but running the ambient heat, the temperatures... I mean, they're 85, 88 degrees, and you don't need all that stuff. So if I'm doing the right thing with Pop-Tart, with the two heat panels, let me know. Um, and hopefully you guys have an awesome day. Really appreciate the support. We hit 3,000 subscribers, which is fantastic. Um, I know it's been a couple of years. I know we've gone through some different people. Um, some new people are joining in, which is awesome. I really appreciate everybody that's stuck around and that are finding the channel. Um, so I'll give a little description um, on the page about the t-shirt giveaway for the 3000 if you guys are interested in that. And again, hopefully you guys have an awesome day. See you guys on the next video.